Uh, I was very fortunate to have uh, an assignment in Europe in 1971 at Opel Design. And Opel Design was the first design center built in Europe uh, by a major manufacturer. So it was really a special place. And uh, Harley Earl uh, had intended that it be uh, a mirror of what was going on in the United States. So technically and the quality of the people, uh, it was really top notch. And um, Bill Mitchell followed Harley Earl and his idea was that he should send people over there from time to time to learn what it was like to work in Europe because he really wanted to do that himself but he never had the chance. So when I left, uh, my boss, his name Ned Nichols, had been chief designer for Buick for a number of years asked me if I was going to bring any sketches with me. And I said, no, I hadn't planned. And uh, we had just finished a really nice car. It was an Oldsmobile uh, XP888, I think it was, that was off the uh, Vega platform. And uh, that car was complete. It was really nice. I had a few of those sketches, so I took those with me to Germany. Six months later, uh, I was in the last month of my assignment there and uh, we received uh, an as a special assignment to do a, a, a low, a high performance coupe for Eric Bitter, who was uh, a race car driver in Germany who had uh, very successfully driven Opals. And he'd become very close with management. Uh, Chuck Jordan had been the, chief, the uh, director of design uh, earlier, and Bob Lutz was the uh, director of, of marketing in Germany at that time. Dave Holes went to replace Chuck Jordan, and he was there for three months, and he had me come over, which was really a great, great opportunity. So anyway, um, we got the assignment, and uh, it was a rush. We had one month to establish a theme, and, which is not very long at all. And uh, so all, there were three, of, uh, three designers in the studio, so we, we went through our drawers and found things that, we might, uh, that would, might be appropriate, put them up. And one of the sketches I put up was the Oldsmobile. And uh, so Dave came in a few hours later and he was looking to start the project because we only had a month. We had to start the decision-making process three-dimensionally. So he picked on that one sketch and said, do that one. I said, well, I want to do some variations. He said, no, never mind, just get started because he wanted to really get going. So we started, we had two scale models with uh, a, a different proposal on each side. So in total there were four proposals. And uh, we worked for about 10 days and uh, Eric Bitter had come in several times with uh, drawings of his own and he was trying to show Dave what you know, his idea was of what the car should be. And uh, after about a week Dave convinced him that what we should do is create a car that had an Italian look. The idea, probably for the first time, the idea of having Italian look and German engineering. So uh, it was very easy to do that. Uh, we, the Maserati Ghibli was still very prominent as the Mangusta was. And, uh, and th those are the two stars, two Italian car stars along with the Mira. So um, we started and uh, all of us started doing Italian-esque looking designs. And uh, I did one that had a shoulder on the side with a tail kicked up and um, the rising belt was on the Oldsmobile. So Dave came in, took a look and said, why don't you make the uh, body side look like the Mangusta, which was easy for me because I, I owned one. I, I had bought the car that Bill Mitchell had bought in turn a couple years earlier and I was able to purchase that car. So we did that and uh, followed the directions and within about Two weeks we had the car pretty much assembled in terms of all the different attributes uh, to do this kind of elegant, uh, sporty car. Now Dave Holes, as a designer and chief designer for Chevrolet, was really the master of sporty elegance. And you look at the Chevrolets were done in the late 60s, uh, those Malibus and uh, you know the rest, the Monte Carlos, those are sporty, elegant performance muscle cars. We, we see them now. but. He was very good at that, and so he mentored the project. Uh, I stayed till my month was over, and then he asked me to stay one more week to work on details on the scale model, which I did. And then I left and went home and completely forgot about it. Now, there was a terrific staff there. 
the chief, uh, the chief designer of that studio was named Herb Kilmer. He was a wonderful guy, a great representation for uh, German design. And uh, Hideo Kadama from Japan was there. He was the first Japanese to be hired as a designer in Europe. And another um, young guy, uh, I can't remember his name now, uh, was there. But the, the three of us essentially were working on the car. And after I left, they carried it forward. The theme stayed the same. There wasn't time to change it. So the theme stayed the same. Um, they sent, it's possible, I don't know the exact detail, but I know they, they took information from the scale model. That was sent to Bauer. Bauer was a bodybuilder. They had built the Porsche 917 race cars and were looking for a low production project. Now this was perfect. So they sent uh, the data to Bauer. Bauer lofted it. It had not been full size at that point. They lofted it full size and made some kind of a hard model. And then that was sent, painted silver, and sent back to Opal Design, where the designers, uh, Dave, George Gallion was his assistant, great guy, where they uh, uh, continued developing the details on the car. And of course, the engineering was evolving, and they could uh, adjust uh, you know, that model full size. The car was built off a diplomat chassis, which was very well received in the German press when it came out in I believe it was 1969 or 70 and uh, it was the, one of the first cars that Opel had brought out that had really outstanding handling and this car had uh, independent front suspension, independent rear suspension, uh, vented disc brakes. Uh, the independent rear suspension interestingly enough the center of the differential was from the Stingray so, uh, you know, that was another American part. The engine was the introduction of the small block Chevrolet to Europe. It was a 327 Chevrolet. It had special heads. Uh, they found that they could not sustain cooling on, on the Audubon. Um, and so what they, they ended up using the marine heads that Chevrolet had developed so they could have more cooling flow at high speeds. And that solved the problem. So other than the uh, special heads, the engine was a standard Chevrolet small block with the 350 turbo transmission. Car weighs uh, a hair over 3,700 pounds. It's all steel. Um, it's fun to drive. It's designed. The engineering uh, character of the suspension is as a high-speed Autobahn cruiser. So you get up to 75, 80, 85 miles an hour, it just feels great on, on the freeway. It was shown in Frankfurt in 73 got a terrific reception. He got almost 200 orders for the car, which was really a sensational thing because here was a brand new brand, a brand new car. No one had ever seen it before, and people were very enthused. Unfortunately, six months later, the energy crisis hit, and uh, he lost um, a majority of those um, orders. The car, uh, originally he expected or hoped to build about 2,000. So seven years later, 1979, he's getting near the end of the run. This car was built in 79, and a total of 395 were built. This one is 362, so it was pretty near the end. Uh, it's an unbelievable task to put a car together. The financials, uh, you know, the problems with engineering, with design, getting things to work, the timing, all of that. It is a huge, huge task. So for him to pull this off and to do it, uh, was fantastic. He went on, he did more cars. In fact, uh, when I was there in 90, in the early 90s, we did another car for Eric, and, uh, but that one did not get produced. But it was because of Eric Bitter that the car happened. It was his vision and it was his hard work that really made it happen. And uh, I, I never expected that I'd end up owning one, but when I, when I had the opportunity, a car from California spent most of its life there, 30 years there, uh, it's one of the best examples in the world in terms of it's rust-free, completely rust-free, and uh, the condition is really very, very good. The, the people that owned it before me uh, painted it this color. They, they had the, a 350-horsepower uh, crate engine installed also with new headers and exhaust system. All that was done before I bought it. So that's the story of this car, Bitter CD. C CD uh, in the press, this was said to mean coupe, uh, 
diplomat, which is what it would mean, uh, how it would be said in the German vernacular. But one day, I, I spent five years there in the early 90s, and one day I was walking to lunch with Herb Kilmer, and Herb had been the chief designer, and I said, Herb, what, is, what does CD mean? And he said, well, they, they wanted it to mean coupe diplomat. He said, but we always thought of it as uh, CD for coefficient of drag. So that was his take on it.